and you are locked let's go hello you guys my name is Kat welcome back to my channel today we are going to be talking about something very fun yes I am wearing a t-shirt I screen printed in grade 10 thank you for asking characters design is probably what most artists think is the most fun and for good reason it is the most fun and just like any other part of art I have opinions about it and I have advice about it because I'm an art student. I design a lot of characters, I make a lot of characters, it's something that I've always done and over the years, in school, out of school, from the internet, I've picked up a lot of advice and tips on how I like to design my characters and I think it can help you too. So without further ado, let's get into it. How I like to design a character is I start with the brainstorm, the initial concept. And then if from that concept there are parts of the design that I don't know how to draw, then you do research. And then there are different areas of character design that all work together. Every single part goes back and influences another part. There's the body type and shape language category, colors and color theory category, um, the character bio and personality category, and then you have the style, clothing, climate category. And every single part of the character design relates back to each other. When I say bio, to go in more detail, um, all of these things are by no means necessary and they can definitely be in your head, but for the purposes of this video, I decided to write them out. Uh, we have their name, definitely not necessary but if you have a name in mind it could give you some flavor um, then their age this doesn't have to be a specific number it could just be are they a child a teen an adult an elder what stage of their life are they in because obviously that will influence their design there is their gender um, when it comes to character design sexuality gender expression all those things can influence a character's design so if that's a part of their character and how they present themselves then design accordingly then their ethnicity so there's a difference between ethnicity and culture ethnicity is their physical features and you definitely want to fight the ambiguous brown character design which is one of my biggest pet peeves where basically you design a white character with white features and then you just make their skin darker there are so many different like eth ethnic features that you can add into your character designs to make them more authentic and then branching off of ethnicity, you have nationality and religion. So that's cultural expression. Do they wear cultural dress? If it is a Muslim character, do they wear a hijab? Like stuff like that obviously would influence the design. In the case of this character, it's based on Greek culture and Greek traditional dress. So that influences the design. And then obviously a very important part of the bio is the personality of the character this is the character every part of the design should work to support the character and make it easy to communicate what the character is about then we have lifestyle so thinking about the life of the character are they very clean are they messy if they have a job is are there is their main design a job uniform things like that and then their location so obviously a character in a very hot tropical climate would be dressing differently than a character in a very cold isolated environment now here we are i am designing a character for journey june which is a monthly challenge where every day you do a sketch um following the hero's journey prompt list and these are not this isn't an art challenge exactly it's more of just a prompt list to for development and practice of storytelling so i am brainstorming my character for that so the main concept as i said in the beginning you start with the brainstorm the main concept is a fantasy world based on greece not ancient greece just traditional greek culture so the climate is based on greece the location um all the clothing are traditional, so similar to what, you know, I would be wearing when I do Greek dance, those kinds of clothing, not modernized, westernized clothing. 
And since this is an action adventure hero, I already knew that I wanted her to have some sort of sword. So from now I was thinking, instead of just a generic fantasy sword, let's think about Greek weapons perhaps for the character design. Name, wasn't really sure, but I knew I wanted her to be kind of YA age, teen, young adult, uh, female character. As I said, based on Greek culture and Greek ethnicity. My main motivation for this was in fantasy, obviously we see the same tropes and same visuals being recycled over and over, kind of medieval Europe aesthetics. And there's so many cultures that we could apply to a fantasy setting. And I just wanted to try something of that that spoke more to me. Uh, the lifestyle of this character, I had already kind of brainstormed her story a little bit. She is poor, she lives in an orphanage, kind of like a group home. She does hard work, field work, physical work, so I definitely wanted her design to reflect her lifestyle. Um, in terms of personality, just a very adventurous, um, spunky, kind of impulsive, a little chaotic kind of character. She just maybe an Aries after my own heart just kind of doesn't think before she acts and just acts on impulse and some things i like to do while i'm brainstorming character is there's a lot of common tropes or sorting kind of tropes that you find on the internet for example hogwarts houses um or D, &D alignments so i put her in gryffindor and chaotic good and then there's all these memes so i put her in uh, looks like a cinnamon roll but could kill you if you know what that grid is if you don't you probably think I sound crazy but there's looks like a cinnamon roll is a cinnamon roll looks like they could kill you would kill you and then obviously the in-betweens of that and then the classic John Mulaney al alignment triangle between McDonald's 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 which she lies under one black coffee and we have food at home <laughs> These things are kind of fun and they really create a very clear picture of the character and the character profile and it's fun to do while you're doing it. In terms of colors, um, it's part of the story that she kind of has sun imagery and warm colors going on in her character design, whereas her foil character, who I don't design here but I'm looking forward to, is more based on moon imagery, cooler colors. So that will be influenced in the design. As I said in the beginning, after your brainstorm initial kind of concepts of the character, if it, the design has elements that you are not familiar with, the next step is to do research, uh, including my Pinterest board inspiration spree of traditional Greek clothing that I'm going to be pulling from, pulling inspiration from, to make the design. Then just kind of the first initial sketch of the body type, kind of shapes I want to use. I definitely wanted her to be stockier, um, maybe curvier, kind of in line with the kind of work she's doing, very hard labor. And then I love to do silhouettes as first initial sketches, just to kind of feel out the shape language of what I'm going to be using, how the character looks before you add all the details, how are, how is her dress broken up, what is the overall shape. And since I wanted her to be more chaotic, I definitely wanted to lean into the triangular aspect of her dress. Um, but I also think she has like kind of this innocent sweet sides, so maybe circles. But I also think that the squares could help with like her sturdiness and the fact that she's stubborn and sticks her heels in on things. So I kind of, you don't have to just do, make your designs based on one shape, especially if it's the kind of character that's not super cartoony. Um, and then just in a simple hard round brush, I'm blocking out concepts, initial ideas based on my reference images, just trying anything and everything and seeing what'll stick. You can do this on a piece of paper using, or if digitally, with any old brush. I'm using literally the most basic brush for most of my planning. Um, and when I'm not, I'm just using a simple pencil sketching brush, which I could have easily done this in my sketchbook, but 
I like the I, I like the ability to move things around and try out new colors easily digitally. I'm also playing around with headdress styles because part of traditional Greek culture was head coverings, but that was more of like a cultural, religious kind of um, expression. It was a symbol of like modesty. Um, but in this fantasy world, obviously I'm not basing it on Christianity per se. Um, so I, I wanna include it, but I also think when I develop the story, it's not gonna have the exact same significance the head covering is not going to have the same kind of significance as it has for cultures today and for Greek culture in times past, playing around with those ideas. And this whole page is just me exploring the headdresses. I don't usually draw these sort of types of clothing, so I wanted to practice and look at reference images to see how the fabric folds, how it is attached to the head, how it works. and. The only way to do that is by looking at reference images and doing a lot of research sketches. Here I'm going hardcore in with the shape language. I'm breaking down the character into circles, squares, triangles. Um, I'm by no means an expert in this, but I think it helps to be mindful about what you're doing, even if you're not totally sure <laughs> how it works. Obviously circles are for friendly, like innocent, naive. Squares are sturdy and strong. Triangles um, imply being dynamic and energetic, and in this case, a little chaotic. I like the idea of her being smaller, like shorter, but still like fiery and full of energy. Um, and I played around with the idea of her having this huge oversized sword, but I figured that kind of lost some of the realism I was going for. And really the only way to develop a character effectively is to just draw them from lots of different angles. So front, side, back, up, down, in action, standing, different expressions, all these initial concept sketches, the more you can do of it, the stronger your eventual design will be. Now I'm here blocking out kind of a more finalized sketch that I'm gonna be using to do all of my color um, tests and experiments on. So I'm taking all those research sketches, I'm taking all those brainstorming sketches, and I'm taking what I like from all of them and putting them into uh, an initial concept for a character that I think reads well, shows good shape language. Like I have her very round face because she is very naive to the ways of the world but also her um, oh, her mandili, that's what it's called in Greek. Her head covering is triangular, as well as her um, skirt and kind of the bottoms of her legs, her calves going into her feet. Those are also more triangular with 
uh, more of a square shape for the chest, for that sturdy aspect of her. But even all these different shapes working together, overall when you look at her design from a very abstract standpoint, the whole thing is a triangle, which I wanted to do over... If I had made her skirt maybe rounder, less A-line, or more boxy, I could have made her overall shape be more of a rectangle or an oval, um, but I definitely wanted to keep that triangular shape to kind of show her smokiness, chaoticness, fieriness. Um, I'm also trying out different specifics with her shoes, because I had a few different ideas for what I wanted with that. The boots ended up getting scrapped. And this is a very good step if you're designing a character, especially if it's for a comic or some kind of project where you're going to need to draw the character in action. If it's just for an illustration, who it doesn't really matter that much, but showing the character design in action. How does it move? Like, how does her skirts move? How, what's her body language like? How does she show different expressions, different emotions? Put your character in different scenes and scenarios and see how the design complements the character. Here I make the decision to, instead of having kind of a generic fantasy sword, I actually looked up reference images for traditional, kind of more ancient Greek swords. Uh, this one's like Xiphias, I think. <laughs> That's how you pronounce it. Um, a differently shaped sword that I thought added to the aesthetic that I was going for. And while you watch me struggle with where to put this, just a quick word on designing characters for specific purposes. Designing characters for comics, animations, illustrations, um, video games, visual novels, all of these things that you would potentially design characters for, every single one has different needs based on the medium. So when you're designing your character, also keep in mind what is their purpose. If things like for comics and animation, you cannot have this character be too detailed in any way, shape or form because that means the nature of the medium is you're gonna to need to draw them over and over and over and over again. Whereas characters that are more meant for a one-off um, illustration here and there, just kind of fun illustrations that you can put more time into, then if you want to add more detail, go nuts. Things like video games, their colors and contrast need to be so on point to make sure that it's readable in the bigger scene. Do your research based on what you're actually designing your character for, because that will then influence what the design elements need to be. Now I'm taking that initial sketch I made of my concept with the finalized, in quotation, shapes and expressions, and I'm duplicating it. You can do it as many times as you want, but for this, I already had something of an idea of what I wanted. So I just duplicated it four times, and then we start trying out different color variations. The rule of thumb generally obviously with exceptions is skin tones is mostly a neutral color unless your character is wearing very little clothing and the skin color becomes the dominant color or if the skin color is unnatural then that would then in be influenced in the design but i always find it easier not to consider the skin tone one of the colors in the color scheme with exceptions obviously and then you really want to stick to one main color, one kind of supporting color, maybe one or two supporting colors, and then an accent color. The more you can minimize and like compact these colors, the more focused your color scheme can be. Obviously, with exceptions, some character designs call for lots of crazy colors, but in most cases, try your best, try it out, see how you like it. Um, you may think you need all these colors and all these crazy like, but sometimes it's just too much going on and you don't realize it until you try and strip it back and pare it down. And then you realize that focus designs with very intentional color design put in can be more appealing than designs with colors just kind of thrown at it like crazy. Like I said earlier, I wanted her color scheme to be mainly warm tone because her character has imagery tied with the sun that's part of the story that we will see unfolding on my instagram stories 
at Miss Katarina T. Follow up, please show me some love. Um, so definitely I wanted to stick to reds, oranges, and yellows, but at the same time I didn't want to make the entire character like that, so I added the black as a sort of secondary color. I feel like the black and white that I added as sort of secondary colors to the main reddish orange kind of helped to not make the entire character so overwhelmingly warm toned. A lot of these rules are not rules, there are no rules, there's just guidelines. And the reason why there are these guidelines is because when you follow them you end up making visually appealing characters. And once you learn the rules and you operate within them for a little bit, you learn the ins and outs, then you can break them effectively. A very important step once you kind of figure out your what you're thinking for your colors is to convert it into grayscale. And this is something you do to check the contrasts. If all if it's all just kind of a muddy expanse of gray, you need to make some areas lighter and some areas darker. Like as you can see here, I was pretty happy with how it looked when I converted it to grayscale because I had the white tones in the mandili and her underdress, and then I had the darker tones for like her overdress, and then I had the medium for her skin, hair, stockings, apron. I had, there's a good range here and it gives the eye something to settle on. And just to kind of illustrate how I broke up the character's colors, um, there's the 70, 30, 10, se seven, 70, 10, 20, 60, 20, 10? rule i don't know but dominant secondary and accent color i think that you can kind of you, you don't necessarily need only three colors in a design but keep in mind the proportions um of each character if each color and how it's being used throughout make sure the accent color is kept as for accents only and make sure the main color is being used for the big areas of space on your character I looked up more reference to see how the kind of um, holster, is that what they call sword holsters, Sol sword sheaths. <laughs> I looked up reference to see how I wanted the, her sheath to look for her sword because don't be afraid of using reference. There's nothing wrong with using reference. Everyone uses reference. If you don't know how to draw something, look it up, use reference, and then you know how to draw it now and you can draw it right in the future. For the rest of this video, I'm just going to be finalizing the initial concept. Looking back on it, I already know there are things I want to change. I might make the red of her apron and her stockings a little more orangey, um, just because I think it ended up looking a little too cool toned. Um, as I do the sketches for the character, her body shape, her face shape, her facial features, things can change. Um, but that's okay, this is just an initial concept and I'm excited if things do change and in the future if I want to develop this project into something legit. Um, I am excited to see where the design will go. I'm just using a more textured line art brush. Um, I'm using Photoshop and there's this huge mega pack of brushes by Kyle Webster. I believe that's his name, I don't know. But you can get them for free if you have a creative cloud, like if you have Photoshop. So all of my brushes I use are from there pretty much. Um, I'm gonna be making at some point in the future a more in-depth video just talking about my drawing process and kind of workflow in Photoshop. I used Clip Studio for the longest time, but for some reason with, I think it was a Windows 10 update, it just refused to work for me anymore. And I get Photoshop with my school, so might as well. <laughs> um, but I'll also share lots of, obviously, tips and advice that can work for absolutely everything. My workflow has not changed pretty much at all since transitioning from First Krita, which is free, then Clip Studio, which is a one-time payment, very affordable, and then Photoshop, which is obviously more expensive. Digital art techniques are applicable literally anywhere and with any program you use. So I have advice to give on that, but now is not the time. <laughs> I will be making a video on that in the future. <laughs> But just to kind of give context to what I'm doing, I'm using a textured line brush um, over my sketch to just kind of add some definitive line work. This opening in her dress at the front absolutely kicked my butt. I don't know why it was so difficult to do. 
ugh, as, as well as putting that sword into perspective. That's going to be really, really fun for me to figure out while I'm doing all my sketches. If you want to see this character and her journey, um, be sure to follow me on Instagram again because since they're just going to be unfinished sketches, I'm not going to be posting them. Um, I'm just going to be putting them in my stories and then obviously saving them in a highlight so you can view them at any point. And I know I've had plans to make a zine of some sort with characters that I've illustrated but I can never settle on a story. I had ideas to do it for a fantasy story before this one and then I kind of lost interest in that. And then I had the idea to make one about superheroes and then kind of lost interest in that. So I figure even if this doesn't turn into anything, I still want to do it because then I'll have all the planning done and if I still feel passionate about it after, I can always go in and finalize it and turn it into a zine. But it, for that matter, I might not. I might find another project that I want to develop further. <laughs> While this is wrapping up, another just some more quick thoughts. I have been posting regularly on YouTube for over a month now, and I am so in love with it. I wasn't really sure what to expect when I started YouTube. Um, my first two videos were not what I want to be doing anymore, but I didn't know until I tried it. And I'm just so happy in it. Like, I love filming. I love doing the voiceovers. I love editing. I never thought I'd like editing, but I do. And I'm just so passionate about this channel and I want to see it grow. And I have so many ideas for videos I want to make. I want to make quality content, entertaining content, things that can actually help people. And I hope you enjoy what you're seeing. <laughs> I have I'm so excited to get to some of these video ideas you have no idea I have my whole like video schedule planned out for like, three months <laughs> just because I can only sustainably make a video a week and that is completely fine I don't want to overwork myself I got a lot of other projects going on but I still just want to get to them so quickly I'm so excited Every single part of the character design, from the shape language, body type, color design, color theory, the style, clothing, climate, and the biography and the personality of the character, every part influences another part. The climate influences the colors, perhaps, and the bio, the biography of the character, where they live, what is their culture, what is their job, that influences the colors the clothing, everything. The body type, using shape language to emphasize the character's personality, working together. This color theory that you use, the colors that you pick, I chose reds and oranges and warm colors for this character, not just because her story has sun imagery, but also because I felt like it would reflect her fiery personality better than if I made her very blue and mellow. I think this is one of the most fun parts about being an artist and about drawing, illustrating, making character designs that speak to the character's personality and their lives just visually, just using visual cues. And the more we brainstorm and the more we learn about the theory behind all these art principles and why they're used, the better designs we can make. Good luck. I hope all of you are staying safe out there. And by the way, Black Lives Matter, and yeah. Welcome back. I haven't waited for you at all. This is being filmed approximately 30 seconds after I filmed the intro. Let's do this 
in one take. If you like this video or you got something from it, please leave a like, it helps me a lot. And if you want to see more videos about art stuff, business, and some nerdy stuff, subscribe. If you have ideas for what you want to see from me next, or you just want to say hi, you know where the comments are. Follow my art Instagram right here, and here's some videos that you can watch if you want to see more of me. I make videos every Monday, so I'll see you next week. Mm, pretty good.